Well, volume of a cylinder looks a lot like the volume of a prism, because it is. I'm going to take this time a base, capital B, as you can see in the formula, but this base happens to be a circle. And I'm going to extrude it or pull it up in the vertical direction. In this case, that would be the blue direction. So I take that circle and I multiply by a height, and that is the essence of the volume calculation. So it's pi r squared, area of a circle, times h, the height. And just like the prism, we can take our cylinder and let's move, take the top face, and we'll do what we, again, what we called shearing. And we're just going to push it over to the side like this. And we generate, in this case, a cylinder that's oblique. Just like the prism, we can have an oblique cylinder, and this will have the same volume as the cylinder that was just right, and that was where it was aligned with the blue axis. So again, that's the same volume, Cavalier's principle. Let's do a pair of straightforward exercises, 10 and 12 from the textbook. Um, as they used to say, plug and chug. We have the equation, either way you like it. Pi r squared h, you should know that by now. So let's go ahead with this first one. We're going to substitute. No problems there, the radius is seven feet. In this case, we're going to actually multiply with the units, just a little dimensional analysis. And let me see, when I square that, of course I'm squaring feet, I get square feet. Seven squares, 49, we're going to write that 49 pi. And we're still multiplying by the height, 12 feet. And of course, when we multiply, um, well, when we multiply square feet by feet, we are going to get cubic feet. So we could say our answer is 588 pi cubic feet, if we're a mathematician. But if we're going to go down to Home Depot and buy something, we're going to need to know real square feet, I'm sorry, cubic feet. So we're going to need our calculators here. First, let's just check 49 times 12. Make sure we did that right. Oh yeah, 588. Well, 588 times pi is 588 times this irrational number right here. Make sure you use that pi key and, and not 3.14. And there you go, 1,847. Rounding to the nearest tenths, well, okay, sorry, hundredths would be 26 hundredths. So that's what you get. And we will call those cubic feet. Well, halfway there. Let's do the next one. Next one, we'll, we'll just fill in the units at the end. I, I think you got the idea about the units. The only thing different here, we've got, we were given, we were not given a radius, we were given a diameter. Remember to cut that in half. And let me see, we'll do the square, and we'll do the squaring there. And right now, 13.4, I think we're going to need the calculator for this. I'm going to pull up that calculator and move it over here, clear it out. And... Um, We've got 13.4 squared, and then we're going to multiply that times 9.8, 9 and 8 tenths. So we've got 1,759.688 times pi. Remember that number, and then we're going to say times pi, so we can get it all done in one shot there, and 5,528 and 22 hundredths. Let's see what we got here. So there's our intermediate and our solution. And that's it. In this case, we're working with centimeters. So we'll, we know that we're ending up with cubic centimeters. Let's do some more challenging problems now. Oh, I love these error analysis questions. Let's see what's wrong with this. No pictures needed. The volume of a right cylinder with a radius of four feet and a height of three. Well, the substitution's done correctly. That's radius of four, and that's a height of three. The problem comes in right here. It's a wrong formula. Uh, two pi r h. Two pi r is circumference. Circumference times eight gives me the lateral area of a cylinder. Now, you also could have figured this out because if you said feet times feet, I don't know what this 2 means, that's a constant. That would have given me square feet, not cubic feet. So that would have shown you something was wrong. And this would be a better way to work it. So it's pi r squared h. Easy enough. When I rotate this around, you see it looks like 
it's a big cylinder with the wee cylinder taken away from it. So we'll use the capital R for the large cylinder and the lowercase r for this smaller cylinder, the one that's green on the inside. And then we can go ahead and do this thing. We can factor this out. Now at this point, um, I suppose we could deconstruct this figure. Let's chop this thing apart. Chop, 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 chop. Let's make cut it down to the base so we can see it right there. R squared minus R squared. That's this circle that you see on on the well on the plane there, the green uh, what is that? The green red plane on the ground. And now we're going to extrude it. We'll do the substitution, and we can simplify that. Remember, three squared nine minus one is eight. I'm putting the units in now, so I've got meters times square meters, and we all see where this is going. That's going to go to cubic meters. Now we can pull out our handy dandy calculator and 56 times pi and that's going to give us about, or to the nearest hundredth at least, 175 93 hundredths square. Ah, stop that, cubic meters. So this will be our last exercise with volume addition postulate. You can see here this wonderful looking cube and that half a cylinder sitting on top of it there. And from that we can get all the dimensions we need. So let's um, let's finish this one off. Again, Pashua 29 volume addition. We've got over here, we're going to add the volume of the cube and to the volume of that half cylinder over there in magenta. For the cube, we'll use the side cubed. It's four um, by four by four. Cow would love that. And it's one half pi r squared h Pi r squared h is the volume of a cylinder, so we'll take half of that. Let's do our substitutions. Substitutions right there, 4 inches for the side of the cube, 2 inches for the radius of the cylinder, and 4 inches for the length. Remember, it's, it's that diameter would be 4 inches, the radius will be 2. And here we go. This step, you may have to watch this one carefully. Remember, that's 2 squared is 4. Uh, four, 4 is 16, half of that is 8, so we have 8 pi plus 64, and that's all cubic inches. Time to break out the calculator. And let's, oh, we got an answer up there already. Let's make sure this works out a o -T. We'll take 64, and we're going to add to it the number 8 times pi, and there we go. As you can see, 89 and 13 hundredths. And the units are cubic inches, and we're done. Well, here's a multiple choice exercise. We're given the volume of the cylinder. We're going to use a formula, and we're going to substitute. We're given 64 pi cubic feet, and we're given a four foot radius. So we're going to use some dimensional analysis to solve for the height. Let's go ahead and square those four feet. We not only get 16, but we get 16 square feet. Notice we've also divided the pi out of both sides of the equation. So we, we did that. We're a little sneaky. Dividing both sides by pi and we did the squaring. So now we're going to divide. If I set up to divide both sides of the equation by um, 16 square feet, notice what happens to the units. The units very conveniently are going to disappear here, but right here uh-huh, I'm still going to be left with feet. And as you'd expect, we'll just come over here and figure that out. 64 divided by 16 is 4. It is 4 feet. So I guess your answer is A. We're done. And here we go with another application of Cavallari's principle. And we first saw this with our prisms. And that was also this section. And as we said earlier, it will pertain to cylinders as well. So let's just work through this one. We've got a cylinder here. And that's our formula. It doesn't matter whether it's right or oblique. And let's just go through the exercise here. Let's show the substitution. And we're going to leave the units off here. We have a radius of 8 feet, height of 14 feet. And we'll square that 8. Then we'll get the product of the 14 and the 64. 
And now we have our answer. Notice now we've, well, we squared those feet. Square feet times feet will be cubic feet. And now we could pull out our calculator and we'll crank through that. And I'm sure we would find 2,814 and 8,700 hundredths cubic feet. Let's do one more. And one final Cavallari's uh, cylinder here. I'm going to spare you the 3D drawing because it's, uh, it's tricky. I've got the cylinder here, pi r squared h, except this time I'm not given the height. This one is a little trickster. I'm also given a diameter. But remember, you're looking at a 30, 60, 90 triangle here. And you all know the identities. 1, 2, square root of 3. This side is half. This side is the radical 3 in the ratio. 1, 2, radical 3. So now I've got 9 radical 3 meters for the height of the cylinder. So let's go back to the drawing. Do our substitution. We've got 6 for a radius, 9 radical 3 for a height. And then we're going to do a, well, we'll do the square here. And now we're going to multiply. Well, 9 times 36 is 324, so I've got 324 times radical 3 times pi whoa, cubic meters. It's time for a calculator. Ikes. Well, looks like we already know where this is going. Let's give it a try. 324 times, I'm going to put in 3 radical. That gives me radical 3 equals, so that's 324 times radical 3, and that makes sense. It's a little bit bigger than times pi. And that's going to equal 1,763. And look at that, one hundredth. So let's say, there we go. And that's going to conclude this section. So we'll see you on the next one.